Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. Today I am once more marching to the beat of my own drum. At the time of this recording there are big Marvel things happening, events upon events, absolute carnage. And so I went back and reread one of my favorite Green Lantern issues. I do what I want. This issue is from 1984. That's what's hot with the kids. If you get to things when you get to them, hit that like button. Yes, we're seriously gonna take a look at a Bronze Age Green Lantern story, which means Hal is still the Green Lantern and it's 1984 Hal, so he's recently been lightly rebooted into more of a flawed character. So he's a bit of a hot mess, and he still maintains one of my favorite Hal Jordan traits ever from the Silver Age, and that's that he's a klutz. I will never let go of this trait. They can take it away as much as they want, they can and put it in their memories, it will always be at the forefront of mine. You couldn't take this man anywhere. He was knocking himself out on tree branches, he was flying through yellow signs, knocking himself out, he was tripping over his own feet. It was just, it was glorious. Also one of my favorite Hal Jordan panels of all time, him slipping on soap, getting out of the shower, knocking himself unconscious, the ring has to leave and go find someone else. So yeah, he was a klutz, and I'm into it. That may sound weird, but let me explain. When I started reading comics, Hal Jordan was not the Green Lantern, he wasn't even a hero at that point. The Green Lantern was Kyle Rayner, and Hal Jordan had turned into a villain and then sacrificed himself, reigniting the sun, and was then the Spectre. So when I started reading comics with him, this trait endeared him to me and made him feel a bit more relatable. We'll deal with Hal's hot mess of a backstory another time. Now this comic in particular wormed its way into my heart because it has one of my favorite melodramatic narration motifs of all time. It carries on through the entire issue. Also this cover, Hal just looks confused. Also guest starring The Flash, Barry Allen, a mere year before his death. Hooray! This comic makes a surprisingly good jumping on point, but I'll get to that later. First, let's get to this narration. The entirety of this comic is transitioned through from location to location, from character to character, with this newspaper headline. The same newspaper. And it's not even the headline itself, it's people talking about what the newspaper means to them. Or rather, the narrator talking about what it means to them. This is a plot connective thread of a paper that also drives the plot at points. Are you ready? Strap in. To most, it is merely a newspaper. Paper, a casual conduit to the affairs of the world, the current standings of a favorite team, and adventures of Charlie Brown and Garfield. But to some, it is a daily reminder of continual frustration. To most, it is merely a cup. It houses liquid that they drink and enjoy. But to some, it is a source of frustration, for they are wearing lipstick and cannot drink from it at this moment. I'm gonna drink from it anyway. I do what I want. Mmm plot thread. This issue is called Shark Bait. You have to yell it because there's an exclamation point at the end. I can't yell it because people here are sleeping. Imagine I yelled it though. It's written by Len Wein with art by Dave Gibbons who draws great floppy hair on Hal. Anyways, this is Congressman Jason Block who hates Green Lantern and is kind enough to not only say his name but give his entire backstory about why he hates the Green Lantern and wants to destroy Ferris Air. Despite being heavy on the exposition, it's actually worked in fairly well as he's telling this to another character. It's not all just him monologuing to himself. And it's a character who he would have to tell it to, too. It's not just some guy he grabbed off the street. Here, listen to why I hate Hal Jordan. Because this scene does end with the reveal that he knows that Hal Jordan is the Green Lantern. Dun dun dun. A reveal so shocking my screen briefly died. But he doesn't matter this issue. Back to the newspaper. To most, it is merely a newspaper. But to some, it is a source of unexpected publicity. Now we hop to Hal who is having breakfast with Carol, his on again off again love interest. But basically she's treated like Endgame. She's his waifu for life. They're currently good, but they're not gonna be that way for long. They're flirting while Hal is reading his newspaper. And in it he spots some rather disturbing news. Barry Allen the Flash has been charged with murder. Yes, at this time in comic history, Barry Allen had recently killed Reverse Flash using, you guessed it, neck snap. It would later be revealed that the Reverse Flash had snapped his own neck and this was all part of his whole ruin Barry Allen's life plan. This murder actually happened while he was on his way to kill Barry's fiance, Fiona Webb. That's right, not Iris West, because he'd already killed her earlier. The reverse Flash don't play. This matters because Hal and Barry are friends, actual ones, not that confusing antagonistic relationship that Hal has with Ollie, even though they're also really good friends. But. Why? I don't know. So Hal decides to go see him, which means two things. Firstly, he has to transform into the Green Lantern, which Carol loves because she hates to see him leave, but she loves to watch him go. Just, uh, there are blogs dedicated to Hal's butt. 
the more you know. There are thirsty people out there. Thirsty men and thirsty ladies. Equal opportunity thirst. But more importantly, he's leaving, which means it's time for... To most, it's merely a newspaper, but to some, it is comfort from the cold. Here we get our glimpse of the issue's villain, the shark. Yeah, keeping his name real simple. Listen, cut him some slack, it was 1963 when he was created. He's been lurking for a couple of issues, but he's only become a big problem in this one. He feeds off of people's energy and absorbs it into himself, like some kind of marine vampire. Quick, somebody call the Vampire of Steel. That was just a little throwback joke to the video where we talked about the issue where Superman turned into a marine vampire. If you missed it, I'll put a link, you know what to do. Click the card, link down below. But no time for that, we're moving on. To most, it is merely a newspaper, but to some, it is an all too fragile shield against adversity. It's flash time and he's fighting the Rainbow Raider, who despite his name could actually do some pretty credible stuff with his power set. He could use colors to change people's emotions, which could be quite useful. For example, in this scene, he uses red to make the crowd angry and turn them against the Flash, which they're already primed to do because they think he's a murderer. They're mad that he killed the reverse Flash because... Because murder's wrong no matter who it is. What's really not menacing is the fact that Barry keeps calling him Rainbow. It just lowers all his villain cred. Hey, give back that loot, Rainbow. You're going to jail, Rainbow. Don't kill again, Rainbow. I shouldn't be laughing, he's about to kill again. However, Hal shows up, stops him, and the two reunite. They hadn't seen each other for a while before this point. They go to a rooftop to talk, and Hal blunders through his feelings, as per usual. He even bums Barry out, and he was already bummed because of the trial. He does this by asking Barry if he meant to kill Reverse Flash, a question that he can't answer. We then learn something kind of creepy about Green Lantern rings. Hal suggests that maybe he could probe Barry subconscious to see whether he did it or not, and is just like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. I'm like, yes, no, you shouldn't. I concur. That's really disturbing. Why can the rings do that? I don't trust Hal. I don't trust anyone. Meanwhile, to most, it is merely a newspaper, but to one, it is more like a menu. The shark has been wandering around town, draining people, when suddenly this newspaper, this maddening newspaper, makes him want to attack the Green Lantern. That is not what happens at all. Actually, he just walks past the little newspaper stand. What, what are those things called again? I don't even remember. The little, where you could collect the newspaper yourself. Oh my gosh. I just realized that I never see them anymore. Anyways, he walks by the newspaper, sees Star Labs, and decides that that's where he's gonna go feed from. So Green Lantern hears the screams, and it's Hal Jordan to the rescue, but not before he very nicely explains the shark's backstory to us. Which was very helpful to me, because this was the first time I had ever encountered the shark at this point. Now for the uninitiated. The shark was transformed via atomic radiation that caused him to undergo millions of years of evolution in one moment. That's right, the ultimate form of shark evolution is this human humanoid-esque giant shark that still has the same head even though there were more human iterations along the way, that evolution chart is just very questionable. Also, he evolved in such a way that he needs energy to live go with it. However, Hal treats the shark like a credible threat, as in the past he has gone up against the entire Justice League. So they fight, only Hal's not landing any blows, because he suddenly remembers that the shark is protected by an invisible yellow force field. This is clearly because there's no other reason that Hal couldn't just beat him in one fell swoop. The shark needs something going for him to protect him. Initially, for the Silver Age Lanterns and beyond, their rings wouldn't work against the color yellow. They would retcon this really convolutedly years later. But for now, at this time, if it's yellow, then Hal Hal Jordan isn't your fellow. I'm so sorry. Sometimes the fruit is low and you've just gotta pick it. Hal figures out that he can use the ring to lift objects and hit the shark with them. So it seems like all is going well. And then at this point, this is when this comic went from a fun time for me to amazing and something that I will always remember and reread. And of course, it involves the newspaper. It is merely a newspaper blown by a random gust of wind, but to a startled Green Lantern, it may as well be the end of the world. That's right. Hal Jordan is defeated by the shark because a gust of wind blows the newspaper into his face so that he can't see. This gives the shark the upper hand and he drains him and leaves him in a coma. Just amazing. I'm putting this in a combo of klutzy Hal Jordan and bad luck Hal Jordan, which would sometimes combine amazingly. The point is this would only happen to Hal. Can you imagine this happening to Batman? People would talk about it for years. So the Green Lantern is laying there, but there's still time for one last dramatic newspaper narration. To most, it is merely a newspaper, but to one, it is more like a shroud. To most, it is merely a random issue of Green Lantern, but to some, it is a source of joy, 
fun, and great entertainment. This comic is a solid jumping on point. It explains all the backstory you need, but not in a clunky manner that stops the plot, or at least not as much as it could. You learn about the shark, who is silly, yes, but is treated like a credible threat. And depending upon your mileage for silly, the design might not even strike you as too outlandish. Of course, your mileage may vary. For some, this is just gonna be a bit beyond the pale. Too much for them. No shark for them. You learn about Hal and Carol. You learn about the Flash. You learn about some of the enemies who want to take Hal down. I didn't even mention everybody. There's a couple of subplots that I left out. And all of this happened in 25 pages. That's amazing. There are some 25 page comics where literally nothing happens. It's also full of suspense. You end on the hero in a coma. You need to know. Now, of course, we all have different tastes. For some, that may have been the worst thing to ever happen to you. But for me, this comic is fun. A good balance of action, angst, and humor. Though some of the humor may have been unintentional, but it was there for me anyway. Hal has a bit of a rep for being boring. And, well, is he? I couldn't tell. The rest of the issue was so interesting. What's your favorite instance of melodramatic narration? Please share down below. Thanks so much for watching Casually Comics. Please do all the YouTube things. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. I'm Sasha, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.